You know, the thing about my dad is that he was a cartoonist, but he was really an artist first. I have, uh, when he was a boy in Russia, he was already starting to paint at a very early age. I have some paintings he did at nine years old. And um, he, he, didn't, he didn't think of himself as a cartoonist. He thought of himself as, a, as an artist uh, and primarily as a painter. Uh, it was in his um, teenage years, he went to the Boston Museum School and studied there with, with, uh, with um, Will Barnett and his young friends were Jack Levine and Hyman Bloom and all these wonderful painters. And he came to Protestant originally as a, as a painter. But during the Depression, uh, he got a job uh, teaching art, uh, you know, for the, the small amount of money they would give, but it was a job. And uh, he also started, he was, he was a, a good old left-wing, you know, liberal, and uh, so he became, in all of those movements that were taking place, and he ended up doing drawings, not cartoons, but drawings for the new masses and other of the, those uh, left-wing papers in the 30s. And eventually, he was, for a while, he was the art editor of the new masses. And people liked his drawings so much that uh, I think it was, Bill Steig, who was a wonderful New Yorker cartoonist, said, you ought to try to do cartoons, you know, and introduce him to the New Yorker, and he, he just clicked immediately. And uh, so all of a sudden he found himself, he never stopped painting, he painted every day of his life. He probably spent more time painting than he did at the cartooning. Um, but cartooning, uh, he was, suddenly he was making money. And he was becoming very well known, and, and William Randolph Hearst wanted him <laughs> for his papers. To, to, and he, and, and they, got, they got this, this request from Hearst to work for him. And then my father said, well, I'm not going to work for that fascist son of a bitch, you know, something like that. And my mother said, Misha, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me handle this. And it wrote this wonderful contract where they had to buy, he did a panel for them, the daily panel. They had to buy it. They did not have to publish it. And so, so quite often you would see uh, an old an old panel being replacing one of the ones he did because uh, something like that. But they, but Hearst loved him, and he, he sent a telegram to New York with two words: "Get Richter." <laughs> so and he was he was syndicated all over all over the world for many years. And so the cartooning he was such so, just so good at it that it uh, it took off and it uh, became financially quite lucrative for him. And also, it's really nice to be considered one of the best at uh, a, a craft and an art like that. So it was very fulfilling for him. And he was always very proud of being a cartoonist. He, wasn't, he didn't feel, well, I'm really a painter, but I have to do cartooning. He loved cartooning. And he saw it as an art. And uh, of course, I have to mention Daumier and people like that. But uh, uh, he was part of a, a great tradition. And, um, and he, was, uh, he was also, he was my dad. He was a wonderful person. And I loved him very, very much. And